Hi all, just another quick update on the droids. Um, been quite busy with the boys lately uh, and got quite a bit done. Uh, this time I'm going to concentrate on R2 though, as I've had a few requests to see how R2 is getting on. Um, done quite a few things. I think on the last video I showed you that I've got the new Rockler bearing or the new Lazy Susan, which is a much better uh, version than the one I'd bought. Um, so that's in there. Um, on the subject of the head dome, this is here, so things are getting quite exciting. This is the uh, club spec uh, bracket to hold the uh, the motor that uh, turns the the head, uh, which I've I've tested now. <coughs> the uh, the wheel, the drive wheel, and the and the bracket are all brilliant. Uh, they're absolutely as as they would be. The Pitman motor I found on eBay. Um, it was really cheap, so I thought, well, I've got to get that, but that's the label that's supposed to have all the specs on it, and it turns out it's not quite the right, pardon me, the right gearbox, so it's a bit slow. It works, but it's a bit slow. Um, so I'm looking into, at the moment, uh, using that and probably trying to drive it off of this, which is um, an L298N motor controller. Uh, that'll work from PWM data from a remote control. Uh, and uh, and then it will control, I think it's up to two motors. I've just got to ch double check. I think it can take up to 30 volts because um, I'm basically I'm using 12 volt motors for the feet um, but the Pitman motor for the dome is actually 24 volts so um, I'm, I'm still back to having sort of dual voltages again. I managed to change one piece which I mentioned earlier on that's just a, a little cheap part I got on eBay but it's a, a voltage converter so it's taking the 12 volt from the LiPo down there and converting that into 5 volts which then goes up and if I switch him on um, runs all the lighting in the head and the other logic displays there so so that's working quite well the one I had before had a variable pot on it a little potentiometer and the trouble with that of course is if you go anywhere near it you touch it and if, if just touching it it could go up by 3 volts and it was causing problems with the speakers I had in at the time. For the moment I'm just using a little Bluetooth speaker um, and the sound quality is really good. I've just put some new sounds on him actually. Uh, there's quite a few including there's one I'm going to try and do the holograph message from Leia. Uh, I don't know where it is on the sequence. I've got, I've got about 30 different sounds. Of course now I've said that. It's going to take ages to find the one I'm thinking of. Anyway, I'll keep talking. When I find it, I'll show you. Um, what else have I done? I've got a. <coughs> I've actually been a bit naughty. I've, although this eyepiece is quite good, it's um, resin. Um, it's, it's not. As, I'm, I'm really stuck with this because I'm trying to do it on a budget, but I want it to be as good as I can possibly make it. Um, so I do things, and I think, oh, can I do a better job than that? So although I've built these legs, the legs are actually out of um, MDF and then 3D printed uh, booster covers uh, and then the bottom, the ankle there, I made out of styrene, sheet styrene. They're not bad and the centre foot I've done, uh, which is also sheet styrene. Uh, it's got its little caster in there, so it's, it's not far off being ready and the centre ankle's down there ready, but I need to build the, the outer feet. But I put a lot of work into them and then I think, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that, I wish I could afford the aluminium ones. Um, so I'm sort of going through that stage at the moment, um, where I just keep wishing I had more to spend on it. Uh, I have built these up actually since I last saw you, so this is the data port, the large data port, which is going to go around the, the front obviously, just under the head. And these are uh, resin utility arms, but the carriers I've made as per the of the specs in the club uh, and the R2D2 Builders Club for the styrene builds and, and to be honest they're okay um, again it would be nice if I can make them out of something a little bit nicer than styrene but for now it's going to have to do but it's a little little slot there we're going to have a, a rod through from a servo which will push push the arms open and closed in theory so that's been done uh, I've got lots of other 3D printed parts that I've been working on these are the supports for the little cylinders that go on the on the ankles. Um, so, 
and I've decided I'm, I'm going to try and avoid using those big lead acid batteries I mean they're great they're 12 amp per hour each um, so that's 24 amp per hour that's a lot but they're heavy um, and I've got a little lipo in there it's only a 2.2 amp um, amp per hour battery but uh, what I was going to do is use it's 11.1 volts so I was going to use two of those and get a Y splitter to put them in parallel and then that'll get me up to 20 23 volts ish uh, and that should be enough for the dome motor and I'll split that off through a transformer to go back down to 12 volts for the drive motors unless I have a separate battery for those um, and then drop down again 5 volts for the dome and the electronics so um, so we're getting there uh, it's in a very messy stage at the moment as you see I'm trying to figure out what to what to do for the feet just to make some temporary ones I'm sorting through all the drawings really to to see there's a couple of different designs for the feet for example um, that's the sort of more uh, commonly used one where there's one drive wheel and one caster but then there's the center drivetrain which I kind of like which is this where you basically have two wheels in each foot um, but they're both driven wheels so the motor the motor goes in the middle and is effectively four-wheel drive so you'll have uh, basically you'll have a, a sprocket for the motor comes through here and a chain that will go around that one round that one and then back up to that so uh, just some of the many things I'm considering at the moment but as the build is concerned he is he is coming on um, did a little bit of paint work just to sort of try and make it look like uh, you know give us an idea what it's going to look like I've got some really nice parts that I've ordered in which are the um, some aluminium parts but um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or 3d printed ones for this one I'm kind of thinking you know I'll get him built get him working but then I'll do some upgrades uh, and then when I do the finally get to do the aluminium legs later on that's when I'll use the really nice alley parts I don't know we'll see um, I did wait. I did make one mistake actually, though, and hopefully this will help anyone who's, who's who wants to do what I'm doing here. What I should really have done is thought about this before I got on with the dome, um, because I've got these little hinges, which are to allow the uh, the pie panels to lift up at the top, so these can all lift up and close again. Uh, now the problem is, it's aluminium to aluminium, and what I should have done was decided to do this and then fitted all these through with screws before I put the inner and outer dome together because what you do is you'd, you'd, you'd drill and screw it through to the inner dome and then you can you make that all nice and smooth before the outer dome then gets glued over the top and then of course um, you won't see the screws. Uh, I have, I've tried numerous different epoxies and super glues and there's nothing I've found as yet will hold them. It'll hold them for a few hours but the minute you go to open a panel and it catches when you're trying to work out its position it just pulls straight off. So open to ideas if anyone's got any good ideas on a good glue that will literally just weld that or weld will glue that to the inside of these. Um, it could be that I haven't roughed them up enough basically what we need to do is get that to there now on this one I can actually separate the inner dome and I could use screws to mount these to there but then I've still got the problem inside mounting these to the inside of the dome and although I'm sure you can weld aluminium I certainly couldn't do it um, so I don't know if that's a viable option or not so um, anyway there you go it's just one of the one of the many choices to think about but uh, he's coming on where have I put his remote carry on going through those sounds. It'd be nice if I can get um, an Arduino set up to play the layer message at the same time as um, the holo projector. See if we can find it. That's coming to the end and we get sad at the end of the sequence. <laughs> and I think that's the last one and then we go back to the beginning of the sequence. Where it's a bit more jolly. You may remember each sound is just triggered by a little remote which I intend to just hold underneath or, or strap to my um, uh, radio equipment.
Here we go. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. So if I could just get that to uh, come on at the same time as the holo projector lights, maybe even get a little servo to move it and do that as a as a separate little gag, that would be quite good, I think. So. Uh, what else is going on? I've been printing. Uh, oh, I know where they are. I've just been printing uh, these. Did these last night actually? These are the little pieces that go under the shoulders. The little hydraulics. Now again, you can have these machined in, al in aluminium, and they look absolutely superb. But because I'm trying to keep budget down at the moment, I've done a 3D printed one which fits in there like so. Uh, it's not quite tight to hold itself, so it'll be painted and then glued in later. Um, but it gives you an idea. That one's not quite straight. That one needs a little bit of padding underneath it, packing, because my my uh, flat there isn't quite level. So um, that's about it. What else have I changed? I've taken the big speakers out for now. I might put them back. I might use them as the club does behind this. There's a board over here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's a board there, so they, a lot of them tend to put speakers behind there and then you have the vents covering them up. And then there's a little charging circuit utility box that goes in there, which I may, I may 3D print or I may just uh, make it out of styrene or, or something else, not too sure. Anyway, that's pretty much where we are with R2 at the moment. So lots going on. Um, I think BB has got to a point now where I can sort of do a more serious update on him. He's uh, all the electronics work, as you probably know, um, but it's the body now that's going together. The, all the different panels and the, uh, uh, and the you know the, the the triangle panels, the white ones, and then the discs with all the utility panels in them. So they're they're coming along nicely. That's all 3D printed, as you probably remember. Um, so that's it for now. It's just a quick update, but. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know a little bit more when we've got uh, something else done. Uh, but for now, it's bye-bye uh, from me, and it's from R2.